Herds of limpers attract squeezers. Squeeze plays. They're exciting, they're fun. Squeeze is on. Schaefer gets it down, and the ball game is over. As long as we're doing them. <laughs> as long as we're not being <laughs> squeezed, yeah. And let's talk about them because they're a super powerful play. Yeah, and they come up all the time. So let's start by defining a squeeze play. I think there's two versions of a squeeze play. One is when somebody is leveraging dead money in a pot. The classic situation would be somebody in early position opens and they get a couple of cold callers. Mm -hmm. And now a person in a late position pounces on all that dead money right. and three bets because the assumption is, is that the opener is the only one that has a somewhat strong hand mm -hmm. and the people that just called behind don't. Right. So there's high value in a three bet, particularly if you get everybody just fold right then and there. Right, so it's like playing two five, first guy opens for 20, two people call for 20, and now you might make it 100. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is that if the first guy who opened didn't have a really good hand, you know, he might fold his jack-10 suited or whatever, and right. you, you're like 95% sure the right. other two people are going to fold. So you're creating all that dead money. Exactly. Give me an example of a situation where you're in the big blind, mm -hmm. and you would normally just want to see the flop with the hand, mm -hmm. but because of how it developed, you decide to three bet. Okay. Let's say that I'm in the big blind with pocket sevens. Okay. And normally if there's a raise, I'm like, yeah, I call, let me flop a seven and yeah. I'll, I'll go win somebody's stack. Right. But what really happens on this particular hand is let's say that the cutoff opens to 12 in a 1-3 game uh -huh. and the button calls, small blind calls, right. and I go, you want me to put the hammer down? And it's a big number because yeah. I really don't want to play pocket sevens out of position against a field full of people. Right. I want the hand to be over right now. Now I have some value. Sure. And if I accidentally have to see a flop, you know, right. it's not totally hopeless. Right. But my goal, plan yeah. A, is that they all fold right then and there. And the rule that I use for my squeezes is, is that out of position, I make it four times the opening raise plus one more for every caller behind. Right. So if the cutoff makes it 12 and the button calls and the small blind calls, well, it's four times that 12 plus another one plus another one. So it's going to be six times 50, 12, 60. 72. I'm going to make yeah, it yeah. 75 because that's yeah. three green chips and all three right. go. Right. No, that's a good formula. I like that. And, and, and you know, and, and let's say the cutoff who opened does call mm -hmm. with his queen jack suited or whatever. Well, you've got information there. Right. He didn't four bet. Right. That's good. You know, you're very, very <laughs> likely have the best hand with sevens. Right. And so even when you do get called, the, the squeeze play gives you extra information that's yes. really valuable. And, and it's given me the, the lead in the betting. Right. And all of my ace kings are in there and all my pocket queens are in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And now the cutoff has to be a little nervous. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. No, I like it. I'm glad you mentioned pocket sevens because I was playing in Oaks yesterday. And I, I got to deploy the rare and special double squeeze. Okay. I, I kind of like this phrase because there is a thing in bridge called a double squeeze. I was okay. like, well, poker's got a double squeeze. So here's the hint. I was playing two, uh, two three, five at Oaks. Mm-hmm. First two players limp for five, mm -hmm. and I had pocket sevens, middle position. I decided to just limp. You okay. know, I was very happy to see this at a single raise pot. Right. Didn't really want to raise and get three bets, so I just called the five, mm -hmm. see what happens. And one or two other people called the five, and it came back around to the big blind, who was a young, aggressive, squeezy type player. Okay. And so they kind of applied your formula to like right. bet big out of position. Mm -hmm. They made it 50. Okay. And their, to they stack their stack was like 220, mm -hmm. uh, their total stack. I was like, okay, so then the first two people call 50. Mm -hmm. My stack was 400. I just said all in, and everybody folded. Great. 
And it's like, that, okay. is a, that is a sweet play right there. Well, I was like, let's see what he's got, right? Mm -hmm. If he's got my sevens beat, well, I was going to lose some money on this hand anyway because right. I was never folding. That's the key to the double squeeze. It's like I was never folding the hand. Okay. So now I got to call and be part of this flop lotto. Right. And I have to flop a set to win the hand. Mm -hmm. Or I can just play range versus range. I think I got a much better hand than his range mm -hmm. on average. And so I just shoved it in there and it worked out perfectly. But the whole point there is that you want to be in tune for that dead money. And look for any time you got two or three callers behind somebody, just think about that initial razor's range. Right. Uh, their range might be wide because they're playing aggressively from the blinds. Mm -hmm. It might be wide, your example, from late position. But if the original opener has a very wide range and then there's dead money after that, yes. This is the prime squeezing opportunity. Right. I don't think we can overstate the value of doing that. I mean, mm -hmm. in a previous video, we talked about this experiment where you never cold call a raise. Right. You always fold or three bet. Yeah. This is along that same... It kind of is line yeah. of let me see if i can find an excuse to three bet <laughs> right rather than just call here right and squeezing is a great way to be thinking oh look at that dead money let's put in a three bet and see if we can just end the hand right here and now i raise 50. blast i fold i fold as well if you are squeezing in position the formula I like to use is three times the opening raise mm -hmm. plus one for each caller behind. So okay. let's suppose that we're playing one three and somebody opens the 15 and he gets three callers mm -hmm. behind and right. I'm on the button. Right. Okay, well I'm gonna make it three times his 15 but there's three more callers. That's six times 15. Okay. That's $90. Right. And I'm coming out with a raise to 90. And you're like, that's a huge raise in a 1-3. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I don't want the original opener to feel he can just, oh, yeah, I call. Right. right? I want him to have to really stop and think. Yeah. Do I really want to call 90 or 75 more uh -huh. with Queen Jack suited? Right. You know, and then you get all those ones in the middle, and they're never calling 90. Uh -huh. so, so what kind of hands do you do that with? I'm going to do it with a hand that's strong enough that if I have to play a flop, I don't feel bad about it. And of course, it's wonderful because I'm in position, mm -hmm. so I don't feel quite as obligated to have a super strong hand. But it also prevents me from squeezing every time I see this configuration right. set up. Just because somebody raises and three people call doesn't mean you're allowed to three bet. Yeah. Just cuz. You want to have some equity. You some want to, hand. You yeah. have to have something. Right. But something like an ace four suited. Pocket sixes. Yeah. It sounds like you're taking the range of hands that you would want to see the flop with. Mm -hmm. But because of the special circumstances, you're going to go ahead and raise with it. Exactly. Okay. So you're not really widening your range itself. You're right. not widening your play range. You're just sometimes raising because there's a squeeze present. I'm getting more aggressive with the hands that with, I am playing. With all that potential dead money yes, out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. So chapter two of this two part video is about not getting squeezed. Because it sucks. And I think this is really just as important, if not more important, because the opportunities to squeeze don't come up nearly as often as the opportunity is to limp along with everybody else and right. then get pushed off the flop by the big blind. We've all right. done this a million times, right? right? Basically, the way I look at it is, if you have a hand where you know you can stand a raise, mm -hmm. so let's give an example. Let's say it's one three and a couple people limped and you've got your, we'll just say pocket sevens. Right. Okay, and you decide to limp along and mm -hmm. you know at that point that if it goes all the way around, let's say the stacks are 400, it goes all the way around the big blind. If he makes it 40, you're going to call. Right. You have a good enough hand. You're getting your 10 to 1 odds in position. However you want to look at it, you know when you, when you first limp, yes. the stacks are deep enough and your hand's good enough to call a raise. Right. So you're not worried about being squeezed. You don't right. care. Right. You're not going to get squeezed mm -hmm. because you're not going to fold. Right. right. But let's say you have 6-5 um, suited. Right. 
Okay, this is a situation where, and in our other videos, we talk about not limping along with everybody else, not mm -hmm. playing flop lot. Well, right. here's one more reason not to. Mm -hmm. Because when you do limp along with the 6-5... That's bad. That's bad. Now you're just inviting the aggressive player to make it 40, and... That's bad. I'm presuming you're going to fold that hand for 40. Right. And so the way you avoid getting squeezed first and foremost is to not just limp along with everybody else. Herds of limpers attract squeezers. So stay out of herds of limpers. And you've got to play the game a little bit and know your players. Some players are never going to squeeze out of line right. aggressively from the blinds, and other players are going to do it a lot. Right. So knowing who's in the blinds on each hand and their likelihood of squeezing right. is also part or of it. Or if you're, if you're in the cutoff and you know the button always will squeeze or will never squeeze, yeah. that's something else to be yeah. aware of. So you got to know the, you know, have some estimate of the squeeze uh, frequency of your opponents. That's right. part of it. But in general, don't be part of the pack. And then the other really, really important part of avoiding being squeezed is being aware of whether or not you are closing the action. Right. That's like super, super important. So like, let's say you're in the small blind and the situation comes up, there's an open and a couple callers and you've got a borderline hand. However, if you're in the big blind, you're closing the action, exactly. you can exactly. see the flop. Yes. So you can never be squeezed when you're actually closing the action on that round. Right. So that's another little formulaic way of, of really quickly analyzing, are you setting yourself up for a squeeze mm -hmm. or not? And if you're closing the action, you're not. You know, that's mm -hmm. a good thing. There's another way that you can avoid being squeezed, but it's kind of an advanced play. What is it? Well, we talked about staying out of herds of cold callers, right? Uh -huh. They're moving in herds. Especially if there's somebody who likes to squeeze. Right. Well, every once in a while, mm -hmm. what you do is you let yourself be squeezed when you're holding pocket queens. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So what you do is, is that there's an open, and rather than three betting your queens, you just go ahead and just put out a little cupcake by calling along yourself. Now when that squeezer pounces on the pot, uh -huh. you get to repounce you with surprise. your queens. Yeah, I strongly approve of that play. I tend to do it with aces, <laughs> but, but it's the same idea. It's like if I know the guy in the blinds can't stand to not squeeze if he has any kind of hand, mm -hmm. and there's one or two limpers or, or an opener, I will not raise. Even after, you know, in that deep a position, people don't expect you to just cold call right. with aces. Mm -hmm. But I only do that if I have a, you know, I think there's like a 50-50 chance that the guy in the blind is going to try to squeeze. So our advice on squeezing is, if you see some dead money piling up out there and you think you can grab it, you've got some kind of hand, go for it. Go for it. And then if you end up having to see the flop, well, you're on your own after that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and to not get squeezed, don't limp along with the pack, don't call along with the pack with the, the, all those marginal hands, which is generally a good idea anyway. And always be sensitive to whether or not you're closing the action or not. Anytime right. you're not closing the action, you might get squeezed. Squeezes on, Schaefer gets it down, and the ball game is over! Logan Schaefer on the suicide squeeze gives the Brewers the win!